Republican Congressman James Lankford, chairman of the Republican Policy Committee, is one of them. Congressman, first of all, thank you for joining me on a busy day. Let's talk yeah, about, uh, let's start with what do you expect to hear from the president in this meeting later today, and what do you want to hear from the president later today, and are those two different things? Uh, well, I will find out if there are two different things on it. My expectation is he's going to lay out his position expectations will lay out ours and then we hope to actually get into serious negotiations 10 days ago uh, the house passed a bill to be able to sign a negotiating team to say we'd like to meet with the senate assign your negotiating team here are all of our people we want to meet and be able to work this out we worked on that every single day for 10 days waiting to negotiate the president said he's not going to negotiate he's not going to negotiate he invited all of us to come over from the republican conference we said it's not going to help to have 230 people over uh, to be able to do a lecture session we need to sit down and actually work this out so we are bringing the leadership over and some of the individuals uh, that are on committee chairs that have the jur uh, committee of jurisdiction, and we'll try to work this out. So hopefully we can sit down and have a serious conversation about how to solve this. Now, uh, Congressman, there has been some talk, and I know you're going to meet, uh, the, the full Republican conference will be meeting shortly, uh, but there is some talk uh, within the conference that we're hearing of passing a short-term debt ceiling extension, but not passing a continuing resolution to keep the government open. Uh, is that something that you would be supportive of? I would actually say there are about five different plans that are floating around among different groups right now. There's a lot of conversation about how do we continue this ongoing dialogue. The president says, well, let's just, um, uh, you, you pass everything that, that I want passed and then we'll talk later. The problem is we've had over 40 different bills that we passed dealing with the Affordable Care Act, dealing with different budget items, dealing with different entitlements, and the, the Senate never responds, the president never engages. So we get to these crucible moments like this where we have to be able to sit down and negotiate it, and we want to just say, let's sit down and negotiate. This is a serious problem. We have $17 trillion worth of debt, and there are real problems with the Affordable Care Act. We can't just continue to ignore it and pretend there aren't problems, especially this in the past two weeks during the rollout, and you see all the different things that are happening with the sign-up process. That's indicative of what's happening in multiple areas of the Affordable Care Act. There are issues. We can't just ignore it. Uh, Congressman, you wrote an uh, op-ed in USA Today arguing uh, some of these points about the health insurance exchanges and the possible delay of the individual mandate. It seems as though, however, the leadership as well as uh, Paul Wisconsin are talking less about defunding and delaying Obamacare and more about debt ceiling and finding a deal there. Do right. you believe that any deal on either the debt ceiling or reopening the government must have provisions tied to some of the recommendations you have made about the Affordable Care Act? Actually, the things that I put in the USA Today uh, editorial today uh, were things that we put out in our last agreement. Just two, two quick things. One to say, let's just be completely fair. Members of Congress in the White House should be in Obamacare, the same as everyone else. And businesses have had a one-year delay on the penalties. Individuals should have a one-year delay on, on penalties. That was all that we were asking for. It's not defund. It's not delay. All that stuff. We moved and said, okay, we'll move to a very simple thing. Just don't have penalties come down to individuals when the White House has already waived the penalties on business for a year. There, there, are two things that are, there are two things that are moving around here. The debt ceiling has always been about how do we stop having debt ceiling votes? What do we do to get our country back on a fiscally stable uh, footing? So that's where the debt ceiling is. The CR for us has been a lot of conversation about the Affordable Care Act. Now those two are slamming together. So you're hearing two different conversations that are happening simultaneous now. Let me follow up quickly with you on the Affordable Care Act. Do you okay. believe that the provisions you outlined in the USA Today uh, op-ed, that those are plausible negotiating points that President Obama, who has to, to date been very, very clear on that he does not, and Senate Democrats say they do not want changes to the Affordable Care Act. You believe those are plausible negotiating points that can be worked out and that would equal a compromise that would satisfy a majority of the Republican conference? I absolutely believe that would satisfy a majority of the Republican conference, so much so we've already voted for that. Here's the issue. The president saw when they started rolling out all the business mandates that things were not ready for that. And so he met with the business community, met with the different lobbyists around town, and agreed to do a one-year delay on the penalties for businesses and still said they could voluntarily be involved in everything, but the penalties would go away. Now we're watching the rollout of the individuals. We clearly the website's not ready. There are going to be major problems in hospitals and insurance companies. All these things are going to happen. There has to have that same thing back to the American people that was given to businesses. I do think it's a very reasonable thing to say if the president gave a one-year delay because there were problems with the business, he should give a one-year delay to the penalties. People could still get on the exchanges. People could still get the insurance. People would still have all the other aspects, but they wouldn't have the penalties coming down whether they made a mistake in the sign up or they just didn't want to sign up the first year. I think it's fairly reasonable as well to say members of Congress and the White House should be in it. Cass 
Christine Sebelius should have been the first person to sign up for the exchanges. We've yet to see that and signing ceremony where she's signing up to go on the exchanges. I want to know why. Congressman James Langford of Oklahoma, who will be at the White House later today meeting with the president. Thank you for your time. Thank you.